This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to another edition of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Wherever you are in Southern California today, we're glad you decided to spend a little time with us. I'm Ron Stutz. Logan, it's great to be back. Yeah, Ron, as always, as I say every week, right, my favorite day of the week here, Radio Day. And uh, just really excited about a good show and give some good information to some you valuable listeners. This show, of course, is all about getting you to and through retirement, doing it in the most efficient way, the most tax efficient way, and efficient in a lot of other ways. Uh, And here's your number to call if you'd like to have a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. That's a conversation, kind of getting to know him. He can get to know you, and it's not going to cost you a penny. If you're new to this show, you know there's a, a good way to, to get a conversation going, it's by calling 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN, uh, 888-823-7526. Call that number today, leave a message with your name and phone number, and you'll get a call back first part of the week, and then you can arrange to have a conversation with Logan Sadler, no cost, no obligation, 888-823-PLAN. Well, Logan, let's talk about uh, why you do what you do. I, I know you have a really interesting job, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about this. Okay. Uh, it's important for people out there listening to understand uh, your passion for what you do. Uh, let's talk about how you got started and, and why you're still doing it. Uh, who, were, <laughs> who were the influential people in your life when you were young who shaped the way that you view money and wealth? And, and what lessons did these folks teach you? Yeah, that's a that's a really great question. Um, I think, like most people, I, I think my parents really did a good job of, of shaping uh, not only myself but my brother and my sister as well for for looking at money the right way. You know, I think a lot of us we grew up uh, for a little while. My mom was a stay at home mom when I was real young. Dad was a was a in the union as a construction worker, and so they both you know they. They, he made decent money and all that stuff, and they worked real hard, and they kind of tend to do the right things with money. We ne- never lived outside their means or any of that stuff, and we always, um, they always just taught us to get up and work, right? I think that's what uh, some of this world maybe needs nowadays, but uh, yeah, we were just taught to, to get up and work and give it all you got, and if you're going to do something, try to be the best at it was always what they had said, and I think that was a big game changer for me, uh, no matter what industry I was going to go into, to make sure that when you do something, to w- try to work as hard as you can. And uh, I would say my mom and my dad definitely helped shape me and get me into where I'm at today. And for some reason, they I always had an obsession with saving money, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Before I even knew that it could grow, right? Before I knew how to invest or any of that stuff, it was always like, well, if I did some chores around the house and I got five bucks, I could save that. And if I did that for a few weeks in a row, I'd have X amount of money, you know? Yeah. So I always was obsessed with kind of just seeing money get put away and how it would grow. And uh, it really kind of helped really teach me how it's so important to be a saver. I think a lot of that was lost in some of these, in some different generations, right? Some some generations were better savers than others when you look at it statistically. But I feel that, yeah, my mom and my dad were just a huge influence on me of how to really, uh, again, work hard and, and really kind of how to uh, put away money and do things in the right areas to help you long term in your, in your family goals and your individual goals. Sounds like great parents and also sounds like you had a great family life when you were growing up. Yeah, it was great. You know, there was, uh, like I said, I had a brother and a sister. I'm, I'm the youngest, and they were, they were both, I think my sister's like five and a half years older, six years older, and my brother's almost seven years older. So a little bit of an age difference. So I always joke, I got to watch them kind of mess up and then me learn from it, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> not absolutely mess up. true. <laughs> yeah, not mess up, but, you know, get in trouble for things in high school or wherever, you know, and they, and uh, so, yeah, I definitely felt like I got a, a I was always around older peoples too, so that helped. And uh, yeah, it was a it was a very very good childhood. You learned a lot from their experiences for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> how did you Great end? Up, how did you end up as a financial advisor? How did you end up in this business? Yeah, that is actually a really great story. Um, it's very interesting. So my mom um, ended up going to work for a financial firm when I was in school. And it was funny. So she actually ended up going to work with one of my dad's best friends. His name was Hugh Regary. Yeah. And uh, it was funny. So she went to work for him and uh, started as a receptionist and worked her way up to being a partner in the business. And they worked together for about 22 years or so. And uh, I had uh, graduated from high school, started, did a little bit of college and all that stuff, and uh, was actually in a different field. 
and uh, was doing well. I lived out in San Diego. Everything was really going well. I met my wife and everything was kind of going in that direction. And uh, Hugh Regary, who was the owner of the company, had asked me to come on board. I had known him since I was a small kid. And he always said, you know, you'll do, you'll do really great at this. You're good with people and you like saving money, right? So now all I got to do is teach you how to be an investor and, and uh, help clients. And so he talked to me about it actually for a couple of years. And it was something where I just wasn't, it wasn't the right time at that. You know, it's, it's all about timing, I think, right? This whole yeah. world, yeah. it's all about timing. And so, yeah, he talked to me several times about it and I was in, in the middle of uh, going to a job that was out of, out of state. And so he had talked to me at the right time. And it was like, you know what? Uh, I'll come in. He's like, just give me one day. Come in for one day. See how you like it. And uh, if you like it, come work for us. If not, no big deal. Right. So I came in for one day and I was here for probably about an hour. And I was like, all right, I'm in. You know, <laughs> let's do this. I just really enjoyed working with the people. I enjoyed the industry. I enjoyed that. Uh, to me, there's so much to learn in finance. There's so many things that change. And uh, so anyway, I came in and uh, I got to work. I always say I probably got one of the most advanced uh, educations you can get because uh, Hugh had over almost 40 years of experience in the financial planning world. So right. I worked side by side with him for about four years. We worked side by side. All I did was kind of shadow him and all that. And then he kind of pushed me into, I got all my licenses, went back to school and all that stuff. And, and uh, yeah, he kind of pushed me out there. And, and uh, so I became a partner with him and my mom. And uh, it was really a great thing. So I'm a second generation financial advisor here. And uh, my mom's still here. We're both partners in the business and all that stuff. So wow. it's uh, it was a really great uh it was life changing, right? By bringing me in here uh, for myself. And uh, it was a great thing for our clients because they were both, you know, they're both different ages. So having someone a little bit younger in here was great to help service that next generation of our clients. And, and uh, that's, that's how I came on, on board here. That's a great story. And obviously, Hugh Regary was a, was a great role model for you. Uh, what, what people in the financial industry have been good influences on you? And what have you learned from them? Yeah, you know, I would say definitely Hugh was probably the biggest, uh, for sure, the biggest impact on me uh, for, by teaching me a lot of the of the principles. And I think uh, having someone that was here from a different generation, for sure, because he was he was quite a bit older than I was, so I felt that was a huge advantage, you know, <laughs> because being able to. Uh, learn different things about different generations and, and how people look at money and how our emotions are. I think it really benefited me uh, and really benefited our clients because it's, it's a way that I'm able to see things, you know, like I have almost 50 years of experience, right? And uh, it was a really big influence on me just sitting day by day with him. And again, knowing him my whole life, he, we didn't, he didn't shy away from telling me what I needed to do and how I needed, what I needed to learn and where I needed to work on to be able to better, to better serve clients. So it was a really, he was a very big impact on me on that aspect, as well as my mom, again, big impact on, on, on her being able to kind of facilitate where I needed to work on things and, and uh, where we could better serve our clients overall as a whole, as well as I have a lot of good uh, friends I've met in the industry where I go to tons of these conferences every year because that's what I love about the industry is things change so much. So going to some of these conferences and meeting some of these really, really great advisors in some of these other states, um, you know, it's really a great it's really a great way to kind of share ideas and see what other advisors are doing. So that way, I, again, I could just bring a better experience back here and back to our clients and, and better serve them. So uh, there's quite a few role models, but for sure, I would say Hugh is by far the biggest impact on me uh, as an advisor and, and as a business owner. Logan, you're an old soul, and I mean that in a, in a complimentary way. <laughs> I've been told that since I was a little kid. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> that's always been it. And uh, like I said, being the youngest, I think it kind of helped shape me to, to just be around people that are typically older than me. Yeah. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, the old soul. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan about your financial situation. Uh, Logan, what are your frustrations with the way that most people plan their retirement that you wish you could fix <laughs> if you had a, a magic wand you could wave? Perfect. So we're going to solve everything here, right? No, <laughs> um, You know, that's a great question. Um, something I wish I could fix. I would say... A lot of people out there. Um, first off, I just that's my favorite part about the job is dealing with people. Mm -hmm. I really just enjoy meeting with them, whether they become a client or whether they don't. You know, it's just great having that experience and getting to know people. But I think the biggest thing that frustrates that frustrates me is a lot of clients don't don't get the proper planning. Mm 
Yeah. You know, and, and, and then you go to other advisory firms. And again, I, I'm not saying we're the only one in the world that does things right, because like I mentioned earlier, I know advisors all around the all around the U.S. really that do a really great job and, and do exactly what we do, maybe better or, or as good as we do. Um, and I think it, really the biggest thing that frustrates me is clients that maybe have an insurance person, right? Their, their advisors only talks about annuities and life insurance, and that's all they ever are going to use, as well as the clients on the other side where all that advisor does is talk about the market. You know, I think it does doesn't do a, a justice for the client to best situate them. And a lot of advisors out there don't act as a fiduciary and they don't do a lot of planning. You know, they just say, hey, let's put your money in this product and you'll be fine. They don't look at, hey, what's the future tax implications? You know, what type of income are you looking for? Are annuities a good route? Is the market a good route? Do we need to use some real estate? You know, looking at the estate planning. That's why we built out, we work with uh, a couple different estate planning attorneys in our local area. One we've worked with for over 15 years. We've been using him and again, I've used him personally. So building out that network was always really big to us for CPAs, estate planning attorneys, mortgage lenders, all of that stuff to be able to, when a client comes in, we want to make sure they have their whole retirement plan done. We don't, yes, we talk about investments. We talk about taxes. We talk about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, annuities, all that stuff, income planning. But I think it's really important to further that conversation and be able to get our clients uh, in the, in the right in the right situation with the right people to make sure that they have their whole retirement plan done, not just stocks, bonds, right? The whole picture. We're getting really personal on today's show, asking Logan why he does what he does and, uh, you know, the good things and the bad things. And uh, Logan, what is the most gratifying thing about your job? You know, that's a really, uh, that's actually a really easy question. Um, you know, our firm, again, is a, basically it's a family run firm, right? We've been around for a long time. Hugh started the business, brought myself in and, uh, and Debbie's here, who's my mom. So, it's been a really great thing to be a family business. And I think a lot of people really enjoy that about us. And uh, I think the best thing I love about it is working with other families. We have, uh, like you talk about all the time, Ron, we're working with second generation, third generation. And we actually even have our first, fourth generation that came on board uh, at the end of last year. So it's just amazing to me to see that uh, if you do right by people and treat them right and really kind of spend the time to get to understand them and their family and what it is they're trying to do and making sure you're putting the best tools out there for them, it is amazing to me just to see them transition successfully into retirement, to have the relationships. A lot of clients have turned into friends uh, over the years. And I think that's really the most satisfying part of it is feeling that, again, people feel confident in you to uh, you know send you a coworker or send you a family friend. Or if something happens to them, their kids feel confident in trusting us because their parents did. You know, I think that is the most gratifying thing, knowing that you're doing the right thing by the clients. Again, you're, you're looking at their whole financial picture, being more of that financial counselor for that family than just that, oh, here's that guy that's going to call me to try to sell me something, right? You know, uh, that's never what our firm was intended to do. Our firm is really, I always say, I'm probably one of the one of the worst salespeople around. I'm really, really not that great at it. I'm really just good at saying, hey, here's what you're saying you need. Here's where a good fit is. And here's how it would work. Here's the benefits. But also here's the cons of that. So I feel just being honest with people and seeing that they really appreciate that, I think is the most gratifying part about my job is just working with those families and, and helping them transition and maintain retirement lifestyles as well as something happens knowing that they trust us uh, with their two most precious assets, which are their financials and their family, right? So that's probably the most gratifying for sure, Ron. Yeah, I know a lot of people out there uh, are certainly liking what they're hearing on today's show, Logan, because, uh, you know, it sounds like, uh, you know, you really get a lot of gratification out of working with a family business, working with families out there. You understand their needs. You help them achieve their goals. And uh, that is all so wonderful. Why is it so important for folks to go ahead and call you today and arrange to have a conversation with you about their financial situation. Yeah, if you're one of those clients or listeners out there that's listening to this show right now and, and you're thinking, man, you know, I'm looking for somebody that does more than just sells me a stock or a bond or whatever the investment is, right? If you're looking for someone to really help guide you and transition you for you and your family into retirement, that's exactly what we are. We are a family-owned business. And the best part about us is we may sound small, but but we're mighty in numbers, right? We've uh, been helping clients do this for our firm for over 30 years. So we have a lot of experience here at our office and uh, really we're an independent advisor. So the best part 
about that is, is we don't have ties to any one company or any one investment. Our main goal is to make sure we're putting our clients in the best situation for them to have a successful retirement. So if you're one of those clients out there, if you're getting closer to retirement and you've probably been listening to this show for a little bit of a while, or this might be your first time listening, it's, I think it's a great time for you to make that phone call and uh, come in for that discovery meeting to where we could really take a deep dive into getting to understand you and your family and seeing if we could be a good fit to help transition you into retirement. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Your number to call to get a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. All you have to do today is call that number and leave your name and phone number. You'll get a call back first part of the week, and then you can arrange a time to have a convenient conversation with Logan. Could start with just a phone call. Could be a Zoom meeting, or it could be you might want to come into one of the convenient offices. Hammett and Redlands is where they are. Regary Financial. But again, you can arrange that no cost and no obligation uh, conversation by calling 888-823-PLAN. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler of Regary Financial. I'm Ron Stutz. We'll be back with more after this quick break. We all know Congress has approved trillions of dollars in spending the past year with stimulus packages, infrastructure plans, and other programs. It's all on top of the tens of trillions of dollars of debt our nation already owes. Yet we're living with some of the lowest tax rates in history. Now, how long do you think that's going to last? Learn how you can prepare for future tax implications by watching Logan Sandler of Regary Financial's exclusive webinar, How Tax Planning Changes Through the Four Stages of Retirement. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 and we'll text you back a link to the webinar right away. Text ADVICE to 21000 and make sure you don't have to pay a cent more in taxes than you have to. To access the free webinar right now, text ADVICE to 21000. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too, and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show because we have some important information coming up. We're back with more of The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, VP, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Offices in Hemet and Redlands, wherever you are in Southern California. We really appreciate your being with us today, spending a little time. You can find The uh, Financial Beat on uh, radio uh, every week, of course. Obviously, you're listening to the show today. But you can also get podcasts, past shows, if there are shows you've missed. And uh, all you got to do is go to financialbeatradio.com. You can uh, also find Logan on YouTube. Logan, explain to folks out there who may be listening for the first time how they access those YouTube videos. Yeah, so we started this thing a few months back where you can head over to YouTube and type in The Financial Beat. Same name as the show, Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And uh, we are doing videos each week over there of new content of things like how to prepare for long-term care, uh, action items possibly during a recession, what you should be doing, what to do with your old 401k. All, all of that good content is over there on our YouTube channel. Uh, slow down again, nice short videos for you on those specific segments. So if you're one of those people that's kind of like myself or you like to hear it but also see it, uh, head over to YouTube and again, type in The Financial Beat and uh, check out new content uploaded weekly. Folks, I have the perfect face for radio and uh, Logan also has the perfect face for YouTube videos. So <laughs> just keep that. Thanks, going. Ron. <laughs> That's why I'm not on there. <laughs> Logan does all, all by himself. All right. yeah. <laughs> so I, I kidded you earlier about being an old soul, and I really meant that in a, in a good way. So let's call this next segment of our show Older and Wiser. Okay. There, there's an old quote that says, age is the price of wisdom. Let's talk about how that applies to the financial world. How do you see your clients changing their perspectives about what money and wealth mean to them as they get older? You know, that's a very interesting question. I, I feel a lot of the clients out there that we are meeting with, you know, whether, we've been, whether they've been with us for five years or 10 years or 20 years, um, or if I'm just meeting them for the first time in their, in their late 70s or, you know, early, early 80s, whenever it is. It does change. I think a lot of people, uh, as you work so hard to accumulate money, to do well, to put yourself in the most optimal position to retire and to enjoy what you want to do. And some of us do very well, right? Some of us put ourselves in an excellent situation where 
we are set up perfectly. And a lot of us, we change our mindset. You know, money doesn't necessarily mean as much to us sometimes at the end as it did as we thought it would, you know? <laughs> now, it, there's other cases where obviously if we if we didn't save well for retirement or, or we did it the best we could, but it just wasn't maybe enough, then things kind of change in that aspect as well. But a lot of people's perception of, of wealth and money does change as you get older. I think all of us would maybe trade a little bit of money for some more time on this world, right? I mean, yeah. that's a famous, uh, famous saying there, but yeah, I mean, who wouldn't buy a little more time if we couldn't. But at the end of the day, I think having the, a lot of the clients that have the wealth to retire and do what they kind of want to in retirement, you do notice some people that just feel very, not that money's everything, but they do feel very satisfied in knowing that, look, I did the absolute best I could over my lifetime. I put my kids in a great spot or my grandkids in a, in a good spot, or maybe even a charity in a great spot. And I was able to do right by myself and, and do the right things along the way to where I'm going to be able to kind of do whatever I want to in retirement, as long as it's feasible and realistic. But you know, just putting yourselves in that good situation, I see a lot of clients, they tend to reflect on it. And I think that's something where it's a very good thing where I'll tell clients all the time, and I don't know if other advisors do this, but I always tell them congratulations, right? It's something where it's so exciting when you're getting ready to retire, or maybe you're already retired, and this recession is going to possibly go on this year, next year, or the five years from now, whenever the next one comes, and you're going to be in a good spot. You know, I think that's something where you don't have to go back to work, you're not worried. I think that's something that's definitely worth saying congratulations by putting yourself in that in that optimal uh, retirement spot to where you can kind of reflect on how well you've done over that period of time. You know, Logan, one of the things we talk about a lot on this show is legacy, uh, leaving something behind to someone or something. And it's important to a lot of people to leave a good financial legacy and others not so important. But with all your clients you've dealt with over the years, do you find people changing their opinion about leaving a financial legacy as they get older? Uh, yes, I do, actually. And it can go both ways, to be honest. Uh, I have some clients where uh, I had this one client who came in and uh, he worked uh, He worked in the electrical industry, was an electrician, and actually was actually ended up retiring out of Edison eventually. And uh, it was funny because his main goal, it was hilarious, his main goal was to, he put away a lot of money, right? He had about, a, about $2 million or so. And yeah. he had a couple houses that he had bought along the way. Him and his wife were that classic American story where they just they just worked really, really hard, right? They, they never really got any gifts in life. They just worked really, really hard. And, and when they made good money towards the end, they just saved it. And uh, so they bought a couple houses and things of that sort along the way. And, uh, and then they had a good retirement account. And it was hilarious because, you know, what he said is, you know what? I'm going to leave the kids the houses and that other money. I want my last check to bounce, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you know what? I want an annuity payout. I want, I want a market money. I want whatever is going to give me the highest income for the longest period of time. And when I die, I really don't care what's left. The kids will get the houses and we're good, right? Yeah. Uh, I've seen it that way. There's not a wrong way to do things. I've also seen it the other way where some clients start spending less because they're worried about, man, I would really like, if I could take 100000 a year of income, that's great, but I'll just take fifty. That way I could leave more and more money to the kids or grandkids or a charity. Uh, I have some clients that buy life insurance later in life because they just want to leave behind a little bit more, right? So it just kind of depends on the client and depends on the situation, but definitely it's something that it becomes more realistic one way or the other, uh, where you're saying, hey, things are, my, my time frame's either really short, so I want to do the best I can to leave behind some money, or man, I could, I could take an extra X amount of money per year. And if I pass away and there's no money left, so be it. You know, and, and uh, I always tell people my job is never to judge the right or the wrong way. It's really just depending on, on the client and what they're trying to do. Because at the end of the day, uh, you worked that hard, you saved the money and you did what you had to do. So at the end of the day, it's your money and you decide what you want to do with it. It's not your kid's choice. It's not the charity's choice, right? Not the grandkid's choice. It's your choice. So there's no right or wrong way, but I definitely see uh, a lot of clients, Ron, tend to change their perspective on that one way or another. Hey, one more question here, and then we'll get off this topic. Do you see people changing their opinion about taking risk with money as they get older? And I think that's probably going to be a very obvious answer. Yeah, well, 100%, right? There's still, I always joke, I have one client, she's in her mid-90s and still probably one of my most aggressive investors. She doesn't flinch at all, right, when the market goes down. Wow. But she's in that rare majority, minority, sorry, a lot of the other majority of the people out there, they do change their risk a lot as we get into retirement because things change, right? We're Now we're drawing income. Uh, instead of you putting $20,000 a year away in your 401k, you're probably trying to take twenty dollars or $30,000 a year away of your 401k. So it's something where as the market drops or as uh, volatility happens or as world events happen, it's something where it becomes much more realistic and we go, uh-oh, I don't want to run out of money, right? I can't suffer 
a 20 or 30% loss. I have another client I was dealing with the other day, Ron, where we were talking and, and, uh, she was real concerned about the market, you know, and uh, right now. And, uh, it was, it was like clockwork. She said, you know what? I remember 2008, right? That was, for those of you that don't, that was one of those times when the market went down pretty significantly across the board, right? Stocks, bonds, real estate, everything. Uh, historically one of the, one of the, one of the big downturns. And she said, you know what? And it didn't bother me a bit. She goes, I was, you know, in my 50s. I thought, yeah, I'm not retiring. I'm good. And she didn't worry about it at all. She rode the storm out, did very, very well. And uh, what's funny now is she's now, you know, you do the math, she's in her early 60s. And uh, it was crazy because now she said, you know what, I, my, if the market drops 10%, I'm worried I can't retire, right? Because instead of it being so far away, it's a year away. It's a couple days away. It's five years away, right? Depending on the client. But it's something that becomes much more realistic. And it is a very real fact that, you know, the market returns going negative at the wrong time before retirement or in retirement can be really crucial to how it affects your likelihood of that success rate of your retirement plan. So if you're one of those clients out there and any of these things kind of are fitting into you as you're kind of getting a little bit older, right? Not, not old by any means, but just, just a few more birthdays on your name there. Um, it's definitely important. I think you make the phone call and making sure that you are properly situated. You've looked at your retirement plan and you know what is going to happen if we had a market downturn. What will happen if taxes go up? Are we trying to leave a financial legacy? What are the best implications and, and ways to go about that? So I think it's really important that uh, you make this call. And I, and I Ron's going to give you the number here in a second. Our office does reach out to you first thing Monday morning and gives you a call and schedules the time for you to speak with myself. And we have a three meeting process where meeting one is just a discovery meeting. It typically is about an hour long. We do a phone call or a Zoom or in person. And I just kind of get an understanding of where you're at, what assets you have, what you're trying to do, when are you retiring, and uh, just kind of get to get that full understanding of who you are before I ever make a recommendation on what investment we're going to use or where we're going to move money or what we're going to do. We really want to make sure we're understanding you before we even throw out an investment and making sure, again, we're putting your needs first. And uh, for those of you out there, I think it's time you make that phone call if you're getting close to retirement or in retirement to see if you could maybe get yourself better situated for the next 10 years. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. Very important phone number. A lot of people call it and they have that uh, discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. And then right away they say, why did I not do this a lot earlier? 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. Simply leave a message today with your name and phone number. You'll get a call back first part of the week. Then you can arrange a time to have that conversation with Logan, the same guy here on the radio here. It's not about pushing products or trying to sell you anything, nothing like that. He wants to find out about your lifestyle, what kind of lifestyle you want in your retirement years, what's important to you, in other words. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. Getting you to and through retirement, that's what Logan Sadler is all about. Uh, This is the Financial Beat. Logan and I will be right back in just a moment. We talk a lot about creating a better 401k, but are we actually taking steps to do so? Maybe it's time to stop talking the talk and start walking the walk. By texting the word ADVICE to 21000, Logan Sadler can provide you with his 401k action steps, a guide that provides you with powerful information that could potentially save you thousands in taxes and fees and put you one step ahead when it comes to your retirement. So text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 today for this special report. Text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. Did you know music is good for the heart? A study at a university in Italy showed that music helps promote a better cardiovascular system. But we also know that a sound financial plan is good for peace of mind. Keep listening to The Financial Beat so we can help you find a plan that both your head and your heart can agree on. We're back now with more of The Financial Beat with the one and only Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Wherever you are in Southern California, thank you so much for being with us today. Logan Sadler's office in Hemet and also another office in Redlands. You can get in touch by calling this number, 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. 
uh, 888-823-7526 to be technical about it. But Logan, we've been doing this show for quite a while, and uh, I know a lot of folks may be joining us maybe for the first time or maybe they've just been listening for a few weeks. If they want to listen to some old shows, I know that you have lots of podcasts available that uh, they can go to. Um, how do they get to those? Yeah, the podcast, uh, like like Ron was saying, we've got quite a few shows built up now. Over 70 of them now are in there. Wow. Uh, you, I know. It's going by quick. Um, you can head over to podcast, uh, wherever that is where you download them on Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, and you type in The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. And again, you get access to over 70 of those episodes. You could download them and listen to them at your convenience, in the car, at the gym, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, again, stay up to date with the most up-to-date financial information on the podcast platform. Again, The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. Over 70 podcasts. It's amazing. You know, they, they always say time flies when you're having fun. And I think we've had fun doing these shows. But also, yeah, a lot uh, of talking. Something that I usually say is time flies when you don't know what you're doing. But yeah. <laughs> Logan Sadler knows what he's doing, folks. Uh, the jury's yeah, still out you. on me. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about something else uh, really serious here, finding the right prescription and uh, this is your time to play the role of the financial doctor. We've done this a couple of times lately. And yeah. Dr. Sadler, I'll give you the symptoms. You tell us what prescription you'd write for this particular patient. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Patient presents with dizziness caused by following the up and down volatility of the stock market. What's yeah. your prescription for this person? For that person, I would definitely say is one of the things that we talk about a lot on this show is understanding your risk tolerance, right? I, I have a I have a software I use with a lot of our clients from when they come in, and I'll uh, like I said, the discovery meeting is really where I just get to know a client. I don't I don't know anything about them yet, so right, I want to get to understand who they are, what they're trying to do, and I ask them a lot of risk questions, right? So if you have a million dollars and your account went down thirty percent, how would you feel about that? And when they, well, I'd feel fine. I'd feel horrible. Um, you know, my stomach would hurt or I'd sell all my investments, whatever the answer is, I like to know. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's not a test question. It's really just trying to get a feel for what your risk tolerance is. And what I do is after that, I'll take all of your accounts. So, you know, your 401k and IRA, 403b, whatever, whatever you have. And we scan it and we do a full workup of reports on it. It's called a risk report. And basically that'll tell us historically what are some of the volatility measures of that portfolio during different times, right? During the uh, 2001 dot-com bubble and 9-11 and all that stuff, uh, during 2008, that big market correction, what would have happened, as well as what happens in up markets. I think it's really important not to focus on the bad or the good, but what is realistic, right? What has happened or what could happen? And that really helps give us a great understanding of what the risk is. And I always say it takes out a lot of those surprises because I think too many people are, are too caught up in what their investments do day by day, a lot of the times because they don't understand the risk that's in those investments, right? So I think that gives you a better understanding of what your risk looks like. And once we better understand something and are more properly situated for something that does fit your risk, it typically allows for you to stop getting that, that dizziness or headache or that, that uh, you know, upset stomach. It allows you to look a lot more longer term because you know, well, you know, I made some shifts to my portfolio. This could happen in an up market and this can happen in the down market as well as I have diversification. Maybe I got more safe money. Maybe I have some, some annuities. Maybe I have structure notes or real estate state or, or whatever the factor is there. It just helps you better understand that risk. And it really does help uh, as a doctor, right? It does help you not uh, not worry as much about what's coming because you kind of already know what's coming. We've already set expectations. This is the financial beat. And today we're kind of changing it over to the medical beat with Dr. Logan Sadler. And uh, <laughs> here's another case for you, doctor. A patient has problems with paralysis in their financial decision-making process because they feel they have way too many investment options to choose from. What's your yeah, prescription? That, that happens. Yeah. yeah, that happens, right? I mean, uh, I always say uh, I'm all about giving choices and, and looking at different things. And I like when you know people give me choices. But if I get you know 48,000 choices, I'm kind of like, ah, I, I just won't do anything because I don't even know what which way is the right way to go, right? Paralysis uh, by ever analysis, happen? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that happens to us in anything, right? I mean, it could be financials. It could be... Uh, too much homework when you were in school or whatever the case is, right? But I think the biggest thing is how I like to kind of go about this, Ron. And I think the best problems to solve with this is to look at what are you trying to accomplish and what are the best tools that I could use to get me where I'm trying to go? 
uh, not getting caught up on on what my friends are doing or what what my neighbors are doing, my coworkers. But what do I need to do? And what are the best investments out there? And what are the best opportunities for what I'm trying to do? And having someone that really can explain the pros and the cons. Do a little bit of research, making sure you're comfortable with it, and then you got to make a decision. You know, I see some clients where. Uh, you know, they've just been, they, they've met with some advisors and they keep going, you know, they go to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten meetings, you know. It, you'll, you're, if you go that long, you're never going to make a decision, right? Because at that point, you're just getting, you're getting so far down the wormhole, you forgot what you were even trying to do <laughs> after that many meetings. So I think it's just important to, to find a good advisor that you trust, make sure you go through their process, make sure you get the information, and then also making sure you're putting the goals and needs out there and making sure that the investments that you're going into or the trust you're doing or the tax return or whatever the situation is, making sure you're making that decision with the most accurate information, but don't overwhelm yourself with you know, 20,000 pages of reports. Okay, next one here. We've talked about this patient a lot before. Uh, this particular patient mentions high levels of anxiety from watching the news every day. What would you, <laughs> what would you prescribe for this person? Turn off the news. No, I'm joking. Um, you know, <laughs> you could. Uh, you know, the best way to do that. <laughs> the best way to do that, really. Like I said, if you're, I always say, if you're making financial decisions based off what's happening on the news that day, you are not properly invested. You don't have a retirement plan, right? That means you just got a couple investments that you don't know that much about, and you're hoping they don't go down too much. Uh, I had this lady the other day who was a referral from one of our existing clients. It's a client we've had for. I think she's been with us for over 10 years. Yeah. And she referred a friend over. A friend had about $300,000 in the stock market, right? It was basically, she didn't know how it was situated, but she just thought it was just kept losing money. And so she was like, what's going on? So she came in and uh, it was funny. She was a super nice lady. We connected right away. Just a very nice lady. And so we got to talking about what her goals were. And she said, I just hate every everybody I go to meet with. All they ever talk to me about is how the market's good, where I should put the money in the market, how long-term, how it will do well, and all this stuff, right? Yeah. And she said, well, I'm, I'm a very conservative person, but uh, I want some returns and all that stuff. But the market just freaks me out. You know, every time it goes up or down, I'm in my 60s. And I just it just worries me that it's not going to come back. And I just think there's got to be somewhere else I could put some money that can do a decent return. But I just don't want to have to worry every single day, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was funny because right then what I realized, Ron, is she had only been talking to one type of advisor, right? Mm -hmm. with, with someone that only probably deals with the stock market. Does that sound sound right? Yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so what I was able to do is I was like, let me tell you about some of these other things out there called fixed index annuities, right? And you, uh, said, she's in way her, for, you said she's in her 60s, right? Yeah, she's in her 60s. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, kind of right in that time frame where she said she might pull the plug in a year or two. And mm -hmm. she's a single woman. And again, you know, th about $300,000 did very well saving for herself and put herself in a good situation. Yeah. But every time the market goes up or down, she pulls money out, goes to cash or does this or the other. And it just always affects her. So it was funny. I said, have you ever heard of a fixed index annuity before? And she was like, no, I haven't. And I said, well, let me tell you how this works, right? Essentially, uh, depending on the company and depending on which one we choose, which is right for you, um, some of them offer upside of the market. So uh, they offer different indexes you could choose from. Some of them track the S&P. Some of them track some Bloomberg indexes or the PIMCO or, or whatever the case is. Essentially is you get a portion of the upside of the market. So some of them have like 50, 60 percent participation rate. Some of them have much higher depending on the company. But what that means essentially is if the mar if that index went up 10% that year, you would get, if you've got a 50% participation rate, you would get 50%. And so she's like, so wait a minute, I'd get 50% of the market upside in that, in that specific example. I go, yes. Mm -hmm. She goes, yeah, but then when the market goes down, I lose all the money. You're right. It's like, no, no. Annuities, uh, depending on the annuity, but a fixed index annuity has a 0% floor. So if the market goes up, you get a portion of the upside. But if the market goes down, you get zero of the downside, yeah. right? And she's like, whoa, I've never heard of something like that before, right? And I was like, well, it's not for everybody. It's not for all of your money, but it can be a good fit for a portion of it. So in her case, you know, we were able to kind of split about half the money was able to go over into that. It gave her peace of mind. It was something where the returns on it are going to be about what she was hoping to average. You know, she was hoping for around a three to 5% return over a period of time is what she was kind of hoping for. Mm -hmm. And uh, between that and her market money, we were able to structure that a little bit better for her as well. And now she's in something where she even said it, 
it just helps me feel a little bit better about my investment plan. She's like, I'm not watching the news as much because I know that I have some safe money, right? And I think that's what a lot of you out there that are checking the news every day are worried about a recession happening tomorrow or today or whatever the case is. I think it's really important that you get with somebody that can offer you that comprehensive view of looking at different asset classes. Again, we're big fans of the market, uh, but there also is other things out there that might be a better fit for you with a portion of your money. Yeah, I bet that client uh, walked out of your office with a much better feeling about everything because that sounds like the perfect thing to do for her. Yeah, Uh, it was a good fit. Yeah, thanks for sharing that story. Uh, Here's another patient for you, Dr. Sadler. Uh, Patient (laughs) suffers from high blood pressure resulting from anger about bad financial advice they got in the past. What's your prescription for this person? Yeah, you know, uh, it's funny. I was dealing with a client not that long ago, maybe a few months back, and, and he uh, <laughs> his first appointment, he goes, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like financial advisors, right? And I'm, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the honesty. And uh, so we got <laughs> to talking, and uh, you know, I told him, you be honest with me, I'm going to be honest with you, right? So um, we started talking a little bit about things, and uh, yeah, he had gotten some... Not not so great advice in the past about what to do with things, and it was actually with his mother's estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, his mother got some real bad advice when they were trying to get some things set up, and it, it just caused a big mess for him and his sister and his family. Uh, some things went to probate, and just some bad overall advice. And I told him, I think the biggest thing is, I don't know everything in the world, right? But I always say what we always do is we really take the time to understand the clients and we put ourselves in a situation where we work with professionals in every industry that we don't know, that, we're not, that we don't specialize in, right? Yeah. So when it comes to Medicare, we work with a Medicare expert. When it comes to estate planning, trust, wills, things like that, we work with an estate planning attorney, uh, a couple of them, as well as CPAs and all of that stuff. So I think it's really important when you're looking for an advisor, you want to make sure that they have the right team behind them. And you want to make sure that you can see that their clients kind of line up with what you're trying to do, right? If you if you deal with an advisor that deals with you know 30 year olds or 40 year olds, and you're 60, it's probably not the right advisor for you. They probably don't specialize in your area, and really want to make sure that you can trust them. And and uh, again. There's good advisors out there. There's bad advisors out there, just like everything else. But I think it's really important that most people need to spend the time to make sure that they understand their advisor, know what they're really specialized in, and and do a little bit of research to make sure you're getting the right advice. And uh, and again, try to put that behind you sometimes. Not all advisors are bad. Not all of them are good. But making sure you find the right fit for you, I think, is super important. All really good points there. Uh, very, very uh, logical. Uh, also, here's a patient, and this is the last one of the list here. Uh, the patient complains of losing sleep because he or she is retiring soon and worries about not having enough money. Logan, what do you do with this patient? <laughs> well, I tell them, hey, listen, that's uh, you're very rare, right? No one's ever worried about running out of money. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> It, it, that's one of the biggest concerns, right? We always talk about taxes or long-term care or the market, all these things. The biggest concern still for retirees is that they don't have enough money to last the rest of their life and that they're going to run out of money. That, that's still the biggest concern. I can't think of anything scarier. Could you run? I mean, being 70, 75 years old when you retire, you had this big hunk of money when you're ready to retire, and all of a sudden, you don't have any more money. Uh, and that's pretty scary. I mean, it's something where you got to look at that and make sure that you are planning properly to put yourself in a situation to where that doesn't happen. I think there's a lot of things you could do out there with proper planning to help mitigate that risk. Like I said, there's certain things out there that have income streams for life. There are certain diversifications you could have out there that maybe protect yourself a little bit from the market. Again, there's uh, different types of market funds out there that maybe do better than others and, and different diversification you can get there. But I feel like it's just so, so important when you're looking at your retirement plan to making sure that you're not losing too much sleep over that and making sure you're doing the right plan. And uh, those of you out there that have been listening to this show, whether this is your first time listening or you've been listening for months, I think it's super important for those of you out there that are in a situation where you're getting ready to retire or getting ready to get a plan together and you're in that red zone, we call it. Maybe you're a few years away from retirement. It is so important that you are working with someone that specializes in retirement planning. And I feel it's super important, again, to make sure that when you're meeting with an advisor, they should be asking you what your goals, what your fears are, what your biggest worries are, what are your financial concerns, all of that stuff, because that is what we do. And that is the best way to find out how to put a plan together to fit that client's needs and goals. Because again, uh, all of us have concerns when transitioning into retirement. It is something that most of you listening to the show, 
you don't plan on doing every day, right? You plan on only retiring once. So you want to make sure that you're working with someone and that you have a team behind you that is putting the right pieces together for you to have that carefree retirement and that peace of mind that I think almost everyone is looking for when it comes to retirement planning. So give us a call. I'd love to spend an hour with you and share some valuable advice that I guarantee you you'll take away some valuable information from the meeting and uh, be able to transition that into your retirement plan, whether you become a client or not. You want to have a conversation with Logan Sadler? Here's a number, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Logan, of course, the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Convenient offices in Hemet and Redlands. If you want to have a discovery meeting, it's very easy to get that, 888-823-PLAN. Simply call that number today. Leave a message with your name and phone number, and you'll get a call back, and then you can make it happen at a convenient time. Logan Sadler, 888 888- a two three plan. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Brigary Financial. We'll have more coming up in just a moment, so stay with us. At the end of the day, no one truly understands your financial wants and desires better than you. That's why it's important to have financial independence. This means you can work when you want, you know exactly where your income is coming from, and most importantly, your finances are stable. If this sounds like something you want, well, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. And Logan Sadler and his team at Regary Financial can provide you with their free guide on achieving financial independence. The free guide will show you how to create an action plan for getting to where you want to be. It'll explain how to calculate a financial independence goal. And it'll define what an ice egg is and why it's so important. Download it now by texting the word ADVICE to the number 21,000. Again, text the word ADVICE to the number 21,000 to gain your financial independence today. What is your name? I'm Arthur, King of the Britons. What is your quest? To get retirement ready. What is the P.E. ratio on your portfolio's top grossing products? I don't know that. Don't get blown to bits by complex jargon. Let Logan help you over the bridge to a meaningful retirement. We're back now with Logan Sadler. The financial beat is on the radio. Go tell everybody you know because Logan has some very important things to say coming up in the next few minutes. I'm sure. I'm confident of that. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. If you're interested in getting to and through retirement, uh, achieving your goals with your money, getting the kind of lifestyle you've always wanted to have in your retirement years, well, then this is the radio show for you. Also available on podcast and uh, YouTube channel videos, all kinds of advice from Logan Sadler. The number to call if you'd like to have a conversation one-on-one about your specific financial scenario, 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. Get a discovery meeting going today. Uh, Got some good questions in the mailbag today. The first one, Logan, is from Teresa in Orange County. And Teresa has a really simple question here. What's your opinion of flipping houses as an investment strategy? Yeah, that's a that's a great great question, Teresa. It's something I've I've definitely been asked before. Um, I think that flipping houses is something that anything with that type of uh, market timing to it, I, I would say uh, to some extent, it's definitely something that you have to be willing that you, you have to be in a situation to where you're able to take that risk. A lot of clients that we deal with are typically approaching retirement. So I definitely would say it is not the ideal retirement, right? Uh, either whether you're doing the fixing yourself or hiring out contractors or whatever you're doing, I would definitely say it is not a great retirement plan. As far as an investment strategy, it can be a very profitable one, right? There is a lot of people out there you see on TV all the time, or you have a friend or neighbor or whoever, and they're making good money. It's something where you could do it and, uh, and be successful at it, just like anything. But just like anything else, there's a lot of people that don't make any money at it, right? Um, I've had uh, a lot of clients not be able to do that successfully. Um, And it can be something where it could be quite costly if you don't know what you're doing. I would say it is something that you really got to have a knack for or kind of a niche for. And uh, again, making sure that you understand the risk of it. Because I've had some clients where they think that they found this gold mine in a house and ends up being kind of a a money pit, right? And they sell it at break even or or they lost money on it. So you definitely want to make sure that you're the type of person that is 
going to be able to do the research, have the time to do that. And again, make sure you're in a situation where you're able to take that risk. But again, I would not recommend flipping houses as an income stream for retirement, uh, just because I guarantee you that's not what you're going to want to be doing in retirement uh, is having to deal with all that. So making sure it just kind of lines up with what it is you're trying to do and where you're at in your life. And again, make sure you have the time for it, because that's not something that's just as easy as, uh, as flipping a switch. Flipping houses is, is not a sure thing, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. Got a nut, uh, another question here, and it's from Billy in uh, Temecula. And Billy says, Logan, I have a variable annuity that seems to have a nice income guarantee associated with it, but I've heard several people say that variable annuities are usually a bad deal. What am I missing? Yeah, great, great question, Billy, and uh, thanks for writing in. I appreciate it. Yeah, a little bit about variable annuities, and I've talked about them before on the show, where I talk about annuities a lot in the show as well, and there is some good annuities out there, and there is some bad annuities out there, and they all have their different purposes, I would say. The biggest downfall with a variable annuity, let's well, start with the pros. The biggest pro of it is they have an income rider, some of them do, where it sounds like that's what you have, where they will pay you out a guaranteed lifetime income. So when you hit a certain age, it starts paying you out an income kind of like a pension, and a lot of them are guaranteed for you know 10 years, 5 years, uh, or lifetime. It depends on that income. And uh, that is a really great feature to it. Some of them have death benefits as well, where, you're, where you, if you pass away, they might be a little bit of a bonus as, as a death benefit. The downside to the variable annuities and why you hear some bad things about them and why there might be a bad deal is a lot of them tend to have risk. So when you hear variable, nobody thinks of variable as a safe investment, right? When you think of loans or, or anything variable, you think of it going up or down, which is exactly the case with the variable annuity. It still does bear risk. And uh, the other bad thing that sometimes can be associated with it is fees. When you hear annuities have really, really high fees, almost all the time they're talking about the variable annuity. Uh, I've seen these things run uh, anywhere from 1% to 4% in fees, depending on what annuity you have and what company it's with, when you bought it, all that other stuff. So there is some pros to the, to the guaranteed income, but the downside is, is you're probably paying a hefty fee for it, probably between 1% to 1.5% extra just for the income rider. So it's something where I would definitely recommend there's some other annuities that might have a lower fee that might have a, more of a safer investment like the fixed index annuity. Um, but variables can serve a purpose. Again, we use them here and there for clients when, it, when it's the right fit. But you just got to understand there still is risk involved, as well as the fees on that are probably pretty high. So I would definitely recommend giving us a call and let me do some comparisons to kind of show you and educate you and see which one might be a better fit for you uh, or see if you're fine where you're at. All right. Well, another great question today. And uh, we thank our listeners for these questions, Billy and Teresa. Got one more here for you, Logan. It's from Jay, who lives in Banning. Jay says, I've heard about a strategy using life insurance to create income for yourself in retirement. And certainly, uh, Logan, we've talked about this a lot. Yeah. Uh, is this a legitimate strategy? <laughs> yeah, it, sound, it sounds too good to be true, right? Yes, it is something. There's a couple different ways to verbiage it, but one of the more popular ones is called an IUL, an Index Universal Life. Um, that is a way, Jay, where basically you could put after-tax money, so a cash you have in the, ha in the bank or whatever, and you can either fund them over a period of time or some of the better ones are a lump sum. So let's say you said, hey, Logan, I got 200 grand I want to put away, um, and I'm looking to take some income off it in maybe five to 10 years, depending on the time frame. Some maybe longer, depending on what you want to do. And you could actually put that $200,000 in the policy. And how it works is essentially right on day one, you get a pretty significant death benefit depending on health. Again, it's qualified through health because it's life insurance. So they give you a pretty decent death benefit, which is a great part of it. But to us, what we use a lot of it for is they also provide an income payout at a certain age, depending on when you're ready to take income. And the income, if done correctly, you could take loans from the policy, which can come out tax-free. So it is something where we use those a lot for clients if we have an IRA and 401ks and things of that sort. And now we're looking at we have some cash, maybe a sell of a home or inherited some money, or you just have extra cash. It is a great way to, to do a lump sum in there and generate some tax-free income a few years down the road. Again, some of the policies are structured to sit longer than others, and some of them have death benefits. And like I said, it's a great way to kind of leverage some money, yes, for a death benefit, but also uh, for a living benefit, which is that income, right? And again, if done correctly, those can be tax-free. And uh, I would love to show you what those look like. Again, something we use a lot for clients, depending on the situation, but it can be one of those tools that is super, super underused out there for some of our clients. Again, 
not for all of your money. Uh, the market and annuities and stocks, bonds, all that stuff still has its purpose, but they can fit in there depending on the client, depending on what you're trying to do. They can be a very unique fit for retirement planning. All right. Well, great questions today from all of our listeners and uh, great job on the show today, Logan. Certainly, I have enjoyed it. Uh, let me give everybody the phone number here so they can get in touch with you and uh, get one of those discovery meetings going. It is 888-823-7526, better known as 888-823-PLAN. So important to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, well, then that's all the more reason to call Logan Sadler's office right away. 888-823-PLAN. Call today. Leave your name and phone number. You'll get a call back first thing uh, on uh, Monday morning. And then you can arrange to have a conversation with Logan about your individual situation. It's all individual. It's all about uh, getting to know your clients. And Logan Sadler is so good at that. 888-823-PLAN. He wants to talk to you to find out what's important to you, what kind of goals you have for your retirement, and uh, what kind of lifestyle you want to have in your retirement. All of that is so darn important. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. Hey, Logan, it's been fun being with you today. As always, great show, and I'm already looking forward to next week. Yeah, appreciate all you guys uh, tuning in. Hope you guys got some valuable education and some information from it. And hopefully we gave you a few laughs along the way. As we know, as you guys know, we try to keep this uh, fun along the way. Not everybody likes to talk about it knows the whole time. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, felt like it was a great show and uh, appreciate everyone tuning in. And guess what? Me and Ron will be back here next week. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Sadler. I enjoy those. those <laughs> thank uh, you. Those medical questions today. Hey, yeah, kept uh, it fun. everybody have a great week. One more time. The number 888-823-PLAN. You've been listening to Logan Sadler on the Financial Beat. There'll be more next time. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial tax or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities. SEC registration does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission, nor does it indicate that the advisor has attained a particular level of skill or ability.